On the banks of the River Wye lies the historic city of Hereford, and from those banks can be seen the two most famous landmarks of the city, the bridge and the cathedral. The stone bridge which spans the river dates from around 1490 and is the oldest crossing of the Wye, whilst the cathedral, dominating the skyline with its impressive presence, is famous for housing one of the six chained libraries of England. Another interesting feature of this picturesque city is the old house, built in 1621, once part of a row of houses, now standing alone as a reminder of a bygone age. The annual festivities of the Mayfair and the Regatta are popular attractions and have entertained generations. Although a lively and prosperous city, Hereford boasts a tradition of agriculture and is famous the world over for its pedigree cattle herds. Unlike any other period of history, the 20th century has benefited from the invention of film, enabling moments of time to be captured and enjoyed forever. The following films were shot by Alfred Watkins, seen here at a scouts camp in 1923. Watkins is famous as the inventor of the bee meter, the first photographic light meter, so called because of Alfred's interesting bees. Some of the earliest scenes recorded of Hereford are these river and street images, filmed after the turn of the century. The boat seen here pulling into the bank was going into Jordan's boatyard, which was the terminal of the Hereford to Abergavenny tram road. Broad Street. In the centre of the road is a horse-drawn taxi driver's hut, used by cabbies for rest and as storage of hay for the horses. High Town, looking towards the old house. Commercial Road, with the railway station at the far end, and Monkmoor Skinyard's chimney in the background. Regatta Day used to be held on the third Saturday in July, instead of on Spring Bank Holiday as it is now. In the background, a line of cloths can be seen, which was erected to prevent people obtaining a free view of the events. A view of the Hunderton Bridge opened in 1853. It was originally used for the Hereford to Abergavenny railway line, but is now a pedestrian bridge. The crowds gathering on the bank of the River Wye to watch the regatta. People of Hereford at play, probably taken on Regatta Day. This boat crossing the River Wye was a ferry boat, the cost of a trip from Hunderton to Brenton being sixpence. Here we have a shot taken from Stockley Hill. Members of the Herefordshire Automobile Club, formed in 1903, can be seen racing up the hill. The May Fair, recorded at the top of Commercial Street. The fair takes place annually at the beginning of May by Royal Charter.
High Town, with the butter market in the background. Looking west from St. Peter's Square. from the top of Commercial Street, with the old house on the right. A traction engine can be seen, which was used to power the fair rides. This shot may have been filmed from the first floor window of Pritchard's, the tailors. In the background, the Tabard Hotel can be seen, which nowadays houses the Cheltenham and Gloucester Building Society. Street and West Street, with the Queen's Arms public house also visible. This film shows the 1st Hereford Infantry, probably on a recruitment march around the county before the First World War. During World War I, the county raised three battalions, who served in almost all of the regiments of the British Army. A memorial in the cathedral shows that the Herefordshire Infantry fought in many major campaigns of the Great War, including Palestine, Gallipoli, Egypt and France. Here, soldiers are seen convalescing on Hampton Grange, after receiving injuries in the war. Moving on now a couple of decades, the following sequences are of Hereford and its surrounding areas taken during the 1940s and 50s. The 
following scenes are of the last passenger trains to leave Peterchurch Station on the 15th of December 1941. The Golden Valley Railway line from Pontrillas to Hay had been reopened by Great Western Railways on the 1st of May 1901, following a period of closure for safety reasons. In 1897, the line between Dawstone and Hay had been judged unsafe, and the remainder of the line had had to be shut down eight months later. Following its relaunch, business had been steady, with a basic service of three mixed passenger and freight trains daily. By the late 1930s, however, competition had arrived in the form of a bus service, which ran between Hereford and Hay. Consequently, the number of passenger trains required began to decline, and although goods traffic continued for some years, the passenger service ceased in 1941. Ancient Order of the Buffaloes on their way to the cathedral in 1948. As the procession moves down Broad Street, we can see the city library, the Kemble Theatre, and the museum in the background. Remembrance Day, 1948. Once again, the procession makes its way through Broad Street. can now be seen going along High Town, with curries and the butter market visible in the background. angle view of the cenotaph in St. Peter's Square. panoramic view of the city.
As with many towns and cities, carnivals and parades were important events for both participants and spectators. The following sequences show the city carnival of July 1950, the floral fete of 1951, and the Coronation Day celebrations in 1953.
Hereford United Football Club played Sheffield Wednesday in the third round of the FA Cup in 1958. The attendance for the game was in excess of 19,500, with cider crates and bales of straw brought in to help seat the overspill. The misty January day was not, however, to prove lucky for the home side, who went down 3-0. The city of Hereford offers many attractions. Here we can see several sporting and entertainment scenes recorded over the years. Horse racing being enjoyed at the city's one and a half mile oval racetrack, which holds regular meetings. As we saw earlier, Regatta Day is a popular yearly spectacle. Another recording of the May Fair as a new generation enjoys the rides and sideshows. A dance held at the Shire Hall on the 17th of April 1952. On the 24th of April 1957, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh paid a short visit to the county, including a two-hour drop-in at Hereford. The royal couple's first port of call was Hereford Football Ground, where they were received by thousands of schoolchildren. Following the first presentations, 
they moved on to the city livestock market. The Queen's interest and the Duke's knowledge of pedigree livestock impressed all who were in close contact with them. During their stay at the market, they were shown some of the finest Hereford cattle. Crowds lining the streets were given a glimpse of the Queen as they were driven through the city to their next appointment at the Town Hall. There then followed an inspection of the 1st Battalion of the Hereford Light Infantry Territorial Army as they paraded through St Peter's Square. Taking tea at the assembly room, Her Majesty unveiled a plaque to commemorate her visit. The party then drove to the cathedral for the final ceremony of the royal tour. April 1959, a stone laying ceremony of the new annex at Langford House Old People's Home. Mrs Ainsley, chairman of the Langford House Committee, lays the stone. the opening ceremony of Bishop's School, Hereford, which took place on the 2nd of May, 1959. The school was the first church secondary modern school to be built in the Hereford Diocese. On the 23rd of April 1959, Hereford gave the Royal Air Force the freedom of the city. It was only the second time in the history of the city that this distinction had been conferred on a service unit. The first was when the Herefordshire Regiment was honoured in September 1945. Following a civic lunch in the Town Hall, members of the City Council walked in procession to Hightown, where the Mayor, Mr Shaw, addressed the crowd. In his speech, he said, the city has conferred its freedom on so few that this fact alone enriches the greatness of its recipients. After a brief history of the RAF in Hereford, given by Group Captain Walker, he then asked for the right of the men of the station to exercise their prerogative of marching through the streets of the city with colours flying, swords drawn, bayonets fixed, drums beating and band playing. The request was duly granted and the gold of the Queen's colours was trooped past the dais. A parade of 500 men left the high town along St Peter's Street, led by the Central Band. They then marched up Commercial Street and back past the dais where the Mayor took the salute. The crowd were also treated to a fly-past of six Hawker Hunter fighter planes.
1959 also saw the visit of Princess Alexandra, the then 22-year-old daughter of the Duchess of Kent. The six-hour visit for the youth rally began with the princess being driven from the station to the town hall via Commercial Street and Union Road. The motorcade advanced slowly to allow the thousands in the cheering crowds to catch a glimpse of her. On arrival at St Peter's Square, she was met at the town hall by the mayor and mayoress, who formally welcomed her to the city. Following the half-hour reception, the party made their way to the cathedral. On one of the lawns outside the cathedral, the boys of Hereford Cathedral School waited to give the princess three cheers. Here she was met by the very reverend Burroughs. Once in the cathedral, she was shown the ancient and priceless Mappa Mundi before signing the visitor's book. Later in the afternoon, the princess went to the Castle Green to inspect the city and county youth rally, where she was welcomed by 5,000 young people and treated to a display of various youth activities. Scenes taken of Hereford in the 1950s.
these pictures taken of the redevelopment of numbers 42 and 43 Bridge Street in 1960 and 1961 were shot by Mr. Godfrey Davis, the gentleman who filmed many of the scenes we've been watching. The redevelopment was for the new premises of Mr. Davis's photographic shop, which had previously been housed in Broad Street. Film of the original Wifel shop in Broad Street between the City Library and the Kemble Theatre can be seen at the beginning of this sequence. Mr. Davis started his photographic career in 1914 and served in the photographic section of the RAF from 1918 to 1919. The family business was formed in 1932. Mr. Davis also provided a travelling cinema, going to many village halls to show some of the latest releases. Occasionally, a mobile electric generator was needed, as many outlying villages were then still without electricity. During the celebrations of the 1953 coronation, 1,000 film shows were given. The new shop was officially opened by the Mayor, Mr. George Powell, in 1961. And here we can see a shot of Mr. Davis himself. These clips show the demolition of the old Wifel premises in Broad Street, where the tax office is now situated. Scenes taken by the Shire Hall of the 1959 general election declaration poll. The Conservatives made history in this election as it was the first time this century that a government was returned to power for a third successive term. The swing to the Tories was reflected in Hereford as the people returned Mr Gibson Watts for a second term of office. Mr Gibson Watts had a comfortable majority of 7,578 over his nearest rival Robin Day, the Liberal candidate. Mr. Day, who was greeted by a mixture of cheers and boos, congratulated the winner by saying that he'd been a most gallant person who had proved a most efficient fighter. the demolition of a once famous landmark in Hereford, the Kemble Theatre, in 1963. The building stood on the site of the old Hereford Theatre, where the well-known Kemble family had performed. Originally, the building was the Corn Exchange, built in 1857. The magnificent structure, with its tower containing an illuminated clock, opened as a theatre in January 1911, and was capable of seating up to a thousand people. The site was purchased by a London property development company who intended to knock down the theatre and build a market in its place. 
The contracts were delayed, however, until January of 1962 to enable the staging of the Christmas pantomime Mother Goose. the building of the Greyfriars Bridge. On the 20th of March 1964, Mayor Gordon Elcox cut the first sod at the ceremony held on land at the Friars Hotel, Greyfriars Avenue. The ceremony was to mark the end of 30 years of waiting for the desperately needed new crossing. For some years before the Second World War, the council had recognized that a bridge linked to an inner relief road was the answer to the traffic congestion. By 1939, a new bridge and its approaches were approved by the Minister of Transport, but the outbreak of war put an end to the project. Following the war, labour and material shortages meant that the plans continued to be kept on ice. During the car ownership boom of the 1950s and the subsequent congestion problems, the need for the new crossing became urgent. The ancient Y bridge was by then carrying 20,100 vehicles daily. Greyfriars and its approaches were built at a cost of £608,000, with the bridge having a 290-foot span and two 85-foot anchor spans located approximately 100 yards upstream from the existing bridge. Hereford's new Greyfriars Bridge opened to traffic for the first time 
at 2.30 p.m. on Tuesday the 21st of December 1966. On the city side, an excited crowd gathered to watch as the vehicles queued up to drive over. Mr. Ivor Williams, the Roads and Bridges Committee Chairman, was given the honour of being the first to cross. Unfortunately, however, he almost failed to make it when his car ran out of petrol. An emergency dash to the nearest petrol station ensured that the ceremony could go ahead. The official opening took place on the 19th of January 1967, with the Mayor of Hereford, Alderman Peter Carter, unveiling a plaque to mark the occasion. Greyfriars Bridge was the first road bridge over the River Wye for almost 500 years. Scenes of Hereford filmed in the 1960s. <laughs> 